Welcome, Chakra Collective, to another empowering episode of Chakras and Cuss Words, where we blend spiritual insight with a dose of real talk. Whether you're here to deepen your chakra knowledge, explore the cosmos, or you just need a place to vibe with like-minded souls, you're in the right space. Let's dive into today's journey of energy, empowerment, and a little bit of cosmic chaos. I am so glad you're here. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Chakras and Cuss Words. My name is Catherine, and I am your podcast host. Welcome, 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 welcome. Today, we are getting into the full moon in Aries, and I will say I'm super excited about this spontaneous movement known as the Aries. Oh, the Aries is ruled by Mars, and the Aries is very like high energy, it's driven. It's independent and the Aries is to known to kind of be like a little bit of a selfish energy and I'm here for it. We've been surrounded by eclipse season. We've been doing all this like self work and energy around self work, but and diving into the shadow and we can continue to learn that process and we can continue to value that process, but we want to move into the Aries movement, the area of independence, courage, that energy of being passionate and showing our leadership skills as this full moon is occurring on, it is occurring on October 17th and it is happening at 7.25 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for those who are interested. It is occurring at 24 degrees in Aries. We are in the sun of Libra, opposing the moon, making this full moon in Aries hit us where it matters. And where it matters is to be a little bit bold, be a little bit centered in the area of individual processes. And this is a selfish full moon. I would say this is probably the most selfish full moon occurring as the Aries is known for it. So the themes that we want to look at for this full moon is to take action. We want to be bold. We want to be strong. It urges us to move forward. Stop hesitating. We want to look at the courage and the boldness that the Aries Zodiac puts in our face. The Aries Zodiac is kind of like that ram. It's ruled by Mars and Mars is intense and it's asking us to step into our power and be brave. There is that individual and independence that comes with Aries that might makes us want to thrive in being tuned into one person and that one person is me. (laughs) Yes, being tuned into your own self, being tuned into your own independent, self-assertive and setting boundaries type self. I always would say with every full moon that we don't have um, any eclipses with, it is a perfect time to set boundaries. Conflict and resolution with full moons are, sometimes it happens. The full moon is seen as a chaotic energy. That's why a lot of times the emergency rooms are so full. No, we don't have any more sandwiches or warm blankets. Please exit to the left accordingly. Just joking. But a nurse knows that a full moon is going to be a clusterfuck, especially if you are working night shift. Sorry, ladies. But this full moon is really taking that energy of boundaries to the next step because it is a time that we are going to look at the conflicts and look at how we can create some resolutions, especially if they are impacting our relationships, our situations, but above all, if it's impacting us because we are selfish at this time. There's a lot of movement that occurs with this Aries. It's about passion. It's about drive. It's about association. And it may feel like an extra motivation to push you towards your goals. And it may make you feel like, yes, you can see the breakthrough. Yes, you can move through the barriers and obstacles that have been holding you back. With this self-care energy, as it is occurring in Aries, the chakras that I really want you to be focused on are, of course, the root chakra, because we want to be grounded and we want to be stable. The solar plex chakra, because we are looking at that fire element. We are looking about that energy that the Aries brings, but also the sacral, the sacral chakra as well. I really like the three chakras for this full moon as being your main focus of energy. 
Of course, there is that area of mindfulness that we are going to look towards the self-reflection and also the energy of being quick in what decisions we make and not too impulsive. But we also want to be impulsive because the moon is asking us to, because it's asking us to look at that energy of impulsiveness, the energy that the solar plex and the sacral bring, letting us step into new adventures. Get your adventures to be centered around physical activity. This is a beautiful moon to really challenge that energy, create rituals towards movement like yoga, hiking, or even dancing. This would be an amazing moon to do like some kind of witchy dance under the moonlight and move that body. Get it out of its little box. Get it out of its traditional ways and move it. Reflect. Take time to look at the relationships and the conflicts and create boundaries to set you forward. When we are talking about this full moon, it is centered in 24 degrees. 24 degrees is known to occur as an energy that entices, I guess you could say the water element. So we will look at that sacral chakra. 24 degrees brings heightened energy, especially to personal planets that are ruled with 24 degrees. So go ahead, look at your birth chart, see if you have any planets with 24 degrees, pay close attention to the personal planets or the points between 21 to 29 degrees, but especially if they are with the cardinal signs. So if you have a planet 21 to 29 degrees or 24 degrees, and it is in a cardinal sign, such as an Aries, Cancer, Libra, and Capricorn, these signs may feel that high intensity of the moon magic. Stepping into the moon magic, especially for the cardinal signs. We have to remember this energy is intense for the cardinal signs. Pluto is now out of retrograde. It is direct in Capricorn. There's a lot of transformation. I know everybody's got that damn reel going on, talking about how the cardinal signs are stepping into their villain era and they're stepping out of this karmic cycle of boo-hoo that has occurred for the last 20 years. And a lot of that is focused off of that energy of Pluto. But really what we want to look at when we are saying, hey, I'm a cardinal sign. How does this work for me? I'm going to tell you. Cardinal signs, tap, tap. Listen the fuck up, bitch. Cardinal signs, if you are an Aries and you have a placement in Aries near these degrees, you may feel a surge of personal power, determination, or restlessness. It is a time to assert your actions. It is also a time to look at your personal goals and initiate change. On to the next. If you are a Cancer, for the Cancer placements, this is a full moon that highlights your issues around security, home, and family. There's also maybe a balance of emotional needs with the career and personal independence. The Libra, I want you to really stay focused on your area of tension, what has been making you so tense. Also, this is a beautiful time. It is a time for relationship dynamics. It is also a time to evaluate the balance in partnerships and assert your own needs as you are a selfish little bitch. And also compromising too much more. Capricorn, this is a time for you to feel the push and pull, especially around your professional state, your career state, but most importantly, around your personal well-being. You may need to reassess your managing responsibilities and look how you can set clear and focused boundaries. Also, take time to be a little bit more focused. Thanks for listening. So now let's pay close attention to everybody else. Everybody else, meaning all the other zodiacs who are not cardinal signs. We want to pay focus on if we have planets such as the sun, the moon, Mercury, Venus, Mars, or the ascendant being near 24 degrees of a cardinal sign or also being centered around a full moon. If this energy is Focus, we're going to want to think rituals. We're going to want to think magic. We're going to want to think intentions, potentials for manifestations. Listen up and listen up close. For the sun or the ascendant, this could bring personal breakthroughs or changes how you perceived 
by how others perceive you. So I want you to be focused on how it is that you want to perceive yourself because how you look at yourself, others sometimes will look at you as well. So take mine to really see what it is that you want to be known for on that individual stance. For your moon energy, let's say you got a cardinal sign ruling your moon. How to look at this at areas of emotional growth or release and heightened sensitivity and emotional clarity. Let's say you got a cardinal sign ruling your mercury, honey. It's all about important communications. You are that mental shift that brings decisions to be made and also to bring that messenger movement. So stay focused on that. Let's say your Venus is holding a cardinal sign hostage. Ooh, I love a cardinal Venus. Let me tell you, babe. Cardinal Venuses, they don't wait for the next move. They make the next move. These relationships and finances and areas of self-worth and issues are the forefront for your next endeavor. Endeavor, whatever that word is called. Okay, now this one's feeling intense. Drum roll, please. That's a horrible drum roll. Anyways, if you have a Mars and it is in a cardinal sign, it's a high energy movement. Let's get it. It's a time to really look at possible conflicts and seeing where it is you need to say, bye-bye, bitch, I'm out of here. Move on. See, to not be too impulsive, but make sure you do the reflection and get it going where you feel aligned in making that decision that it's time to and some conflicts, and some movement that has been holding you back. This particularly is the full moon that you will call in your inner and outward action. So look at that area. Definitely when we are looking at the area of 24 degrees, it is seen to carry a lot of Piscinian vibration. The Pisces isn't necessarily a cardinal sign. It's actually a mutable sign. But regardless, 24 degrees is that area of spirituality, imagination, intuition, compassion, and creativity. And sometimes a little bit of confusion. So if you have been feeling confused with his upcoming full moon, Look at it where you can let this confusion more seem like a dream, like a daydream, like an area around moving to the next level. It is a heightened sensitivity for leadership roles and also personal goals where intuition and creativity fuse together to create some actions. It is a time for being a compassionate leader and also feeling that energy of alignment with you. This is also a good time to look how it is that you can restructure the urge of making too much of action without looking at the emotional and also without looking at the intuitive impact that you have on your decisions. So even though this is about action, as it is centered with Mars and the energy of Aries, we also have to remember that there has to be some energy of reflection and significance that is aligned with the 24 degrees of Aries. Given that the full moon is occurring at 24 degrees, the Piscinian influence softens the deep, deep impulsive nature that the Aries brings. And it lets us to challenge our assertiveness without feeling overbearing, without seeing that we can be a simpler, but also leader, but we don't have to be so aggressive as that Mars energy brings and really use a softer side where we are allowing the feminine to kind of balance it out, especially when we are dealing with an energy so strong as an energy with Aries and a full moon and Mars. We like that 24 degrees to kind of use this moment to act decisively but also to look at the deeper motivations and the energy that's surrounding our spiritual path. So I am going to do a quick reading. The reading is going to be fast, 
I know this is a pretty fast podcast and it is kind of something that is like, woo, spur the moment, put together quick because I know sometimes we like it quick. But in all honesty, it's just to go over the full moon in Aries that's occurring. I have tons of astrology on the astrology series if you want to learn more about the planet of Mars. So let's get into the full moon at Aries. Full moon in Aries for the fire signs. If you are a fire sign, I'm directly talking to the Aries. Also, I am talking to the Sagittarius and the Leo. This is a lot of time where this prosperity is going to lie ahead. So be focused on stability, the root chakra, and making movement towards a strong foundation. We like a strong foundation. So keep it, keep it strong, keep it sturdy, keep it moving. For the next zodiac, the next zodiac element is going to be the water signs. If you are a water sign, that means you are a Pisces, you are a Scorpio, and you are a Cancer. So for the water signs. This is a time that you are going to show the world the real you. And we're going to go back to that perspective of changing that movement of what it is that you want people to perceive of you because that is really the real you. You don't want people to think, oh, she's flaky. Oh, they don't show up on time. Oh, they're not really an action go-getter type of person. Or, oh, maybe they're too emotional. I've been practicing stoic, sto, stoicism, and I will say, stoicism is art. And being a little bit stoic lets you know how professional, how determined, and how stable you are. When you're able to detach those emotions on energies around feeling a little bit too spontaneous, we can all have our desires, achieve our big dreams, and ideals of visions without being outwardly impulsive. I like to get a lot of my energy out while recording these podcasts. I think it's great. I think it helps me and also helps you. So this is a time of showing the world the real you, but also doing it in a place where the emotions and the impulsiveness has a little bit of a lighter side. For the earth signs, for the earth signs, this is a good time for you to stay focused on. And if you are earth sign, baby, you're a Taurus, you're a Capricorn, or you're a Virgo. This is a time for you to hold your vision, even if it's been bumpy. Even if the obstacles have been there, hold your vision, be true, stay, stay focused on what it is that you want to do in your energy of moving forward. Also, stay determined. Stay determined in what it is that moves for you. Hold on to that vision. Don't let the obstacles push you back. Remember that with every energy that Mars has, that the Aries has, Aries is moving. It's grooving. It might have to redirect, but it's continued to focus. It is that motivational energy that lets you hold on to your vision, to let you hold on to your dreams, especially when it feels like there are some emotional topsy turnies. Also, if you are an air sign, I'm talking to you, honey, the air sign, this is for you. And if you are an air sign, that means you're a Gemini, you're an Aquarius, or you are a Libra. This is a time that you see that the end of a tough cycle is ending. The end of a tough cycle approaches. So all this work, all this hard work you've been putting in, getting over obstacles, moving past obstacles, you've been holding it down, honey. You continue to hold it down. You continue to move. See the light. Understand that there is always a light at the end of the path, at the end of the shadow, at the end of the reflection. You've been doing the shadow work. You, I know if you've been rocking with me, honey, you've been doing the shadow work, okay? You've been doing that reflective energy. You've been doing that interpersonal energy. You've been doing that area of improvement, that energy of movement focused on your individual self, that selfish self saying, yes, you deserve this. Yes, you deserve to be happy. Yes, you deserve to make assertive actions. Yes, you deserve to live in your creativity. Yes, you deserve these idealistic movements of your visions and dreams coming bigger, 
grander, becoming reality. And yes, whatever has been holding you back, whatever has been tied you down, whatever energy has been feeling stuck, it's stopping. And it stops with you, honey. So take that look, take that movement, understand it's stopping with you and the end of the cycle is coming. And I hope everybody has an amazing, fantastic, beautiful full moon in Aries occurring on October 17th. And thanks for listening to Chakras and Cuspers. Make sure to follow, like, subscribe. Also follow me on the Instagram. You know I like to do a lot on the Instagram, honey. Chakras and Cuspers. Okay, so follow me there. Follow me on TikTok. Follow me everywhere. Just follow, 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 follow. And everybody have a great day. Bye. And share it with your favorite witchy bestie. Bye-bye.